Next is the uh, county manager report. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. <clears throat> um, I want to thank you all for your confidence and support in, uh, in and during the budget process. Um, it is a huge relief for us to be able to check that off our list and to do everything that we need to do um, over the next month to close out the current fiscal year and be ready with a strong budget that is adequate as well as fiscally responsible for our next year. Um, that doesn't happen overnight. Um, in addition to all of the time that, that you all have spent and, and put in with that, um, we have a tremendous team led by Ms. Stephanie Black. Um, I feel like Sunday's co-led by Ms. Rachel Bowen with um, some of the, the staffing shortages that we've had in finance. And then also HR, Mr. Kevin Beals is a tremendous part of that. So um, that, that great budget could not have come to you without all of their hard work. So ladies, thank you. Um, and Kevin could not be with us tonight. Um, I want to let you all know that the county called for and held the required meeting related to local option sales tax on Thursday. That date uh, kicked off a 60-day window um, during which we would need to sell that out with the appropriate certificate to the state of Georgia. If not, um, then there is a process in the law that would move us into ADR, which is a form of mediation. Um, in the conversations that we have had with the cities, um, we hope that that's not the case. We do not think that that will be the case. Um, we will be working next week to prepare that certificate with the current percentages in place and forward that on to the city of Valdosta. And then the percentages that go to the smaller cities are based off of the current census numbers and their population. Um, so we'll keep you all posted as we move through that process. Um, on Friday, we had a staff team that visited the Thomasville Animal Shelter in preparing to move forward with Lowndes County's new animal shelter for some best management practices and some positive, um, some policies that have had a positive impact in other communities similar to Lowndes County. So we were able to take a look at those policies and how they operate their shelters. So there's some things that we're working on where that is concerned um, with the ultimate goal to decrease our euthanasia rates. And some of that is dependent upon how and how many animals actually come into your shelter. So we think that there is a shared responsibility there with citizens. Um, certainly we want to make sure that we're meeting their needs, but there's also some folks out there that are just irresponsibly breeding, breeding animals and then they get stuck with a, a litter of puppies or kittens and they don't want to take care of them and they turn them into the shelter and that's happening over and over again and that's part of our numbers. So we're going to work on some public education and policy related to that. Um, this morning, again, during the meeting that Commissioner Evans and I had with the Tourism Authority, we discussed a feasibility study for a future phase of the Conference Center. Um, some of you are aware that the current Conference Center um, is unable to attract some larger events simply because there's not a large enough room with enough breakout rooms um, that also has a banquet hall where people can be fed. We've all been to conferences together, so you're familiar with the silly expectation there. Um, there was a, supposed to be a phase two to the conference center when it was originally designed um, that was never built. And so now through that feasibility study, there's conversations that are happening as far as what would the plan be? Could we support that? We're in the very beginning um, stages of that conversation, but I want you all to be aware and we'll keep you posted as we move forward. Um, <clears throat> I know that you all have received and we had some conversation at retreat over complaints in the unincorporated area related to chickens. So the uh, conversation with the update of the ULDC was that we would find a provision for chickens with um, some guidelines that helped citizens be good neighbors and responsible chicken owners. Um, so now um, we continue to see an up uptick and I think that we will continue to see even more as the inflation hits and people are trying to figure out a way to curb their grocery bills. And so we're going to move forward with the provision for the allowance for chickens prior to that final update to the ULDC um, with those setback requirements that we have discussed. So we will continue to talk through the process, but we've got several right now that are in the hopper and we feel like that to tell people today that you can't have chickens, but in three months you can't have chickens, that's just not good government. I think that we're, we're creating a double standard and, and probably misunderstanding. To Commissioner Weisenbaker's good point, I don't think that that's good common sense. So we are going to move forward uh, with the chickens. Bear with us. We'll try to help people through the process, um, but it's just, it's part of it. Um, and then um, we will be off on Monday for the 4th of July holiday, so thank you all for that. And we do have a, a appreciation um, gift for all the employees, just a small token that will be circulated through all the departments um, that the department heads help put together for every single employee on the payroll. So thank you for the opportunity for that as well. That's all I have. Yes, sir. Going back.
that a loss? How often does that review? Every 10 years. 10 years. Yes, sir. 